Hi, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you two different ways in which you can have two columns within your document in a certain section. So the first way is to go up to the Home tab, go along to this icon here and click. And here it just shows you all the different marks you've made by pressing various keys. So obviously this one here is a return key. And here, if I was to press the tab key, then it would give me a little arrow. So the reason we've done this is so that we can see where our section begins and where our section ends. So let's say, for example, if I highlight all this text, I'm just going to turn it red. So let's just say all the red text I would like in two columns, but only the red text. So I've selected it all. Go up to Layout. Go to this Columns icon here. Click on the drop down and select Two. Now, as you can see, we've got this section break here at the top, and we've got these two tiny lines at the bottom here. That's also a section break. Depending on you where you make this section break will depend on whether you get a longer line across the bottom that looks like this. What this means is that everything between this line here and this line here is going to be in two columns. So as long as you type within these two lines, everything will remain as two columns. So let me just demonstrate. Let's just select this paragraph here. I'm going to copy it, Command Control C. We go to the end here. So my cursor's at the end. And all I'm going to do is just paste it, Command Control V. And because I'm pasting within the section between this line and this line here, it will remain as two columns. And I can continue that on. And as long as it's within these two section breaks, it will continue as two columns. If I then go to here and press paste, you can see it will revert back to one singular column. If you would like these two columns to be on one page, let's just make one page worth of text. If you just want it to be on one page, you can use your return key and just send everything to the next page. And then you can just have that on one page all by itself. So let's just turn that off. Let's go to the Home tab. And let's just switch off the markers. And that's how your document will look if it's just on that one page. Anything you type here will be in one column. But as you can see, it will nudge everything down. You just have to grab by clicking and dragging. Just grab and then just use your return key and delete key to pop that back onto the same page. Let's just delete that text. Now if the text within your section isn't enough to then warrant it going to the next page, you can then do exactly the same. Just hit the return key if you want the columns in the middle of the page and just move all that text down. Turn the markers off and you can see how your document will lie. Now, if you want to get rid of those section breaks, then all you need to do is hit your command or control key and click on this line. It will highlight it and just press delete. And then again, if you hold your command or control key down, click on this break here and just click delete. It will take everything back to the original one column. So the next way we can add columns to a particular section of our document is using text boxes. Now this is a particular technique that will only suit a certain type of document, but I'm going to show you it anyway because for some of you it may be extremely helpful. So if you go to insert, go along to text box, click on the drop down, select draw text box, and then just click and drag. Now let's say for example you have an amount of text you need in your column. So let's say we need this text in a column. So I'm going to highlight it, copy it, Command or Control C, and I'm going to paste it into my text box. And the great thing with text boxes is you can move them around by moving these squares so it will suit your needs. You can also duplicate these boxes to ensure they're exactly the same size if you want to have your columns identical. The quickest way to do that is to hit your Alt or Option key on your keyboard. Just click and drag like this. 
And then all you do is just change the text. So I can go and select some other text. Obviously you can type your own text in here. And let's just copy that again to give us some more text. Now you can see that these two text boxes currently have a border around them. And if I move them, you can see there's a white background to them. So we can get rid of both of those. So if you select your text box, go up to shape format, click on shape outline, and where it says no outline, this will get rid of that black border. And where it says shape fill, click on the drop down, select no fill. And then when you move it around, it will be completely transparent at the back. And when I click away, you can see that it no longer has that outline. We can do that with both of them. Just go and select those two options. Once you've selected them up here, you only need to click on them. You don't need to go into the drop down and select no outline because that's the option that's already been selected. So you may think, okay, that's great, but when I move them around, I actually want them between my text. I don't want them on top of my text. That's fine. We can use the wrapping for that. So if you right click, go down to wrap text. In fact, let's go up to the top because you can't see it. So if you select your text box, go to shape format, go along to wrap text, click on the drop down, and here you have a number of different options. And this will depend on where you want your text or your columns to lie within your document. So you can have it where the text will wrap around your text box or at the top and the bottom. So for example, let's choose top and bottom. So let's just zoom out. And you can see if I move this over, what's happening is as I move it, you can see the text is moving to the top and the bottom of my text box. Now, at the moment, that text is quite close to my text box. You can see at the bottom, it's quite close there. So in order to change that, if we right click on the text box and go down to more layout options, go to text wrapping and then go down to distance from text. If I put in 0.5, so it's 0.5 centimeters and click OK, let's just zoom in. You can see now that there's a little bit more space between the bottom of our text box and the next set of text. So as I move it up and down, it's not quite so close. Now, alternatively with these text boxes, if you go up to shape format again, make sure your text box is selected. Go to wrap text, click on the drop down and select tight. You can see what happens here is as I move my text box, the text will wrap around my text box. Now again, the text is very close to this edge here, so we can do exactly the same thing can right click on that text box, go down to more layout options, go to text wrapping, and I'm going to go to the left hand side, I want 0.5, right hand side 0.5 as well, and press OK. And then as you can see, we've got a little bit more space around that text box. Now, if you need to use them as columns, all you need to do is, so I've now completely customized this text box with regards to the spaces around it and the borders and the background. So I'm just gonna get rid of this text box and I'm gonna copy and paste this one. So I copy and paste this one. It means I have all those attributes copied and pasted with it. Now I've shown you how to do the quick way. You can obviously press Command or Control C click away from the text box and press Command or Control V and then you get the same text box here with the same attributes. So again, I can double click inside and highlight, just click off, click back on. Let's get rid of that text and then let's get some more text over here. Copy it, Command or Control C, select the text box, double click inside, make sure your cursor is there, Command or Control V and then we have that text inside. And then once again, we can move that around if you want to extend that column down, we can do. Let's just have a little bit more text here. There we are. Now, to ensure that these are perfectly lined up, what we can do is roughly line them up with our regular text. And we can select them both by holding the command or control key down and clicking on both of them. You can see they're now both selected. We can then go up to shape format 
and then we can go along to this alignment tool here, click on the drop down and select align to top. And that will mean that these two boxes are perfectly lined up at the top. Even if we decided to stretch one of these out, it will be lined up perfectly at the top. In addition, if you want to select them both, you can turn them into a group, select this group icon here and then select group. And now you can move the whole lot round as one complete group. You can move it onto a different page if you like. Now, if this happens, you can see there's a line of text here that almost appears to be inside your text box. So again, right click, go down to more layout options, go to text wrapping. Let's go to square, different from text here, 0.5. Let's do 0.5 on everything. Press OK and there you have it. So the text will never be too close to the text within your text box. If you want to undo that group, then just select it, go to shape format, go to group, and then select ungroup. And then you can fully edit your columns again. And again, if the words have got too close, you can go in and edit them. All layout options, wrap text. Because sometimes when you group and ungroup them, they will lose those qualities again, so you do need to sometimes check. And then again, you can do the same with that one if you want to. And then it just means that this regular text here and here doesn't get too close to the text boxes. You can also see that there's some clunkiness going on with the text at the bottom here. But again, that can be solved if you group these two together. So again, because they're not the same height, there we go. Sometimes if you make them the same height, it sorts itself out. If not, you can group them and the text won't have some funny behaviour going on at the bottom here. Just go up to the Home tab, take off the marker, and then you can assess how it looks. So there's two different options there to having two columns in just a section of your document. I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.